Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trendsetter DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called a panty drop. The ingredients you need to make a panty drop. You need some Tito's vodka or any sort of vodka that you like. I like Tito's. You're going to need a sugar rimmer. You're also going to need some ginger beer, some simple syrup, and some ice. So we're using a martini glass because we want to make it cute. So first in our shaker, we're going to pour two ounces of our vodka. Okay. Then we're going to do one and a half ounces of ginger beer. I love how ginger beer smells and tastes. Then we're gonna get our simple syrup and we're going to do one and a half ounces of simple syrup. Before we shake it up with ice, we're gonna rim our cocktail glass, our martini glass with a lemon so that we can perfectly put it in the sugar and make it pretty. I got a really cute yellow sugar rimmer from um, the liquor store so that it's not just the plain old white granulated sugar, but it still works. So we're gonna pour our ice into our cocktail shaker. Shake our panty drop. It says 30 seconds. But you know it's time to pour when it starts getting icy. And then strain into your martini glass. Since it's a panty drop, we'll just drop a lemon in there. I hope your panties drop tonight. <laughs> Welcome back to Cocktails Dirty Discussions, you guys. Hey, y'all. Um, how has your week been? It's been very busy, but mm -hmm. very good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've been a, a busy body these, these past couple of of weeks. Life is different. I'm definitely in like a huge transition. I passed my real estate final. Congratulations. Thank you so much. That, Kiki, you should have seen me studying. <laughs> like, when is the last time you had to study for something? Like, I felt like a kid, you know, when they're like, <gasps> eight plus eight, if Johnny has six apples. Mm -hmm. Like, I literally felt like a child all over again, just learning something totally different, mm -hmm. rewiring your brain to learn something that really is not in my everyday life. You know what I mean? I'm learning about credit scores and loans and like in a depth that is like, I'm absolutely loving it, by the way. At first I was, I've definitely been having some mini breakdowns. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. But finally passed the test. So excited. I cannot wait for this part of my life to kind of see the success from it. Mm -hmm. Really excited about it. Um, I've been meeting a lot of new people. One thing I love about diving into the real estate world is that it really forces you to go out and network in a way where it's like, you're not just going out and acting like your network. You gotta talk to people. Mm -hmm. um, I have a pretty big network and can't wait to, I haven't really told everybody but y'all <laughs> and Kiki and my mm -hmm. family. So I can't wait to really like do the rollout, let everybody know when I'm selling or if you're trying to list a home. I'm really excited about it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I feel proud. I feel uh, ambitious and really motivated. That's good. Yeah. I also did a bonus episode, you guys, with Dr. Drayvon James. Mm -hmm. And when her PR reached out at first, I was like, I wonder like if this episode is going to be a good conversation. Sometimes when we do the bonus, when we do any episode, you never really know like what kind of conversation the guest is going to come with. We normally have all hits, but every now and again, you got a little miss. Mm -hmm. So um, I had her come on. She's a doctor. We talked about- What um, kind of doctor? She's a pharmacist. Oh, okay. But she got her doctorate. So I kind of gave that. I was like, with it. but anyway, she was great yeah. conversationalist. Um, we talked a lot about dating with bitterness. Um, 
just a lot about dating and relationships and self-love, all that stuff that people need to keep hearing just so you can, you know, if you don't know better, you won't do better. And sometimes you need to just keep hearing these things. It was a great conversation. I was like, if you are ever in Atlanta, please hit me up. Mm -hmm. She an old lady, but I love old ladies. Shout out to you, Dr. Drayvon James. <laughs> um, I went to go see Planet of the Apes. I know the movie has been out for a long time now, y'all, but we be bulk recording and this is the first time we really like get to talk after I've seen it. Do you like Planet of the Apes? No. Oh, okay. All I've right. seen it. I've seen one movie. I mean, I have no idea how many there are. I watch one of them. Let me not say I don't like it, but it's not like, oh, there's a Planet of the Apes. I got to see it. What I watched was cool. Okay. It was I, long. I, it is long. I, I I love all of the Planet of the Apes, even the very old ones. So like me and Bay, we rewatched all of them like in the course of a week. How many are there? They're, including the old ones, I don't know, but I think there's about, is there five, Warren? It might be six or seven or maybe even eight. Because I was thinking like eight to ten. It, not ten, not but ten. It, they're close. And okay. they're just, I love the storyline. Um, so then we went to the movie theater to go see the new one. It was it was really good. I loved it. If y'all are Planet of the Apes fanatics, let me know. Um, what else did I do? I joined in a run club. <laughs> you <laughs> are serious about this running shit. <laughs> That's really good, though. I just was not expecting you to say that. I, I saw it on here. I was like, this is a joke. Maybe this is a reminder for a joke. You joined a run club to I, run with your feet on the ground. To run with my around. feet. Around. <laughs> why are you running? I, I'm trying to build up my endurance, honestly. Okay. Like, here's what happened. Remember I told you I joined that workout group, Hills for Atlanta? Yes. That's every Wednesday morning. And that was bad enough. You were Girl, running up the hill, I dying up, every week. I finally am out. Like, so the first time I went to work out with them, like I said, it was really bad. I was struggling. I felt like an old woman, and I'm mm -hmm. not. When Sometimes when you're made aware of certain things, it's like, I can't just sit here and let this be like this. I felt really bad. I was like, this is not okay. So in order for it to get better... The guy that uh, coaches it, y'all, he real fine. Y'all need y'all need to be out there. The ones who be like, I can't find no men. They out there at Piedmont Park with their shirts off, running up the hill. <laughs> um, but he was like, you gotta, you're not really, you're not working out. I could tell, like, you're not really like doing cardio stuff. So, because I was seeing little black speckles, and I was like, I didn't even go to the hospital. Like, is this normal? He was uh -huh. like, you gotta just you're probably you, about to faint. Yeah, I was about. There were several times where I was about to faint. So I was like, you know what? He was like, you gotta do something at least like three times a week to come out here and do this. And so I was like, Let, I gotta, I gotta run. Like that's what I hate doing. So I, I gotta do it. And so I joined the Atlanta Run Club, and we run. Saturday mornings at 8 a.m., Monday nights at 6 30 p.m., and Sunday mornings. And so it's, I'm gradually but surely getting like, I don't see the black speckles anymore and I don't throw up and I can run a little long. I can't run the whole time, but like, uh -huh. you know, I can run longer. The endurance is building. The endurance is building and I can feel it. And you know, Beyonce, she, I really keep her in my head. Like when she said she was building her endurance so that she could really sing her songs and not lip sing when she's performing, she runs and sings. Yeah. And so I'd be running and, and singing. <laughs> okay well that's good I mean health is wealth yes. you gotta get out there and do something yeah. um, I have some friends who like run marathons and they are serious about running and they've convinced some other friends in the group to really start and so they've all been talking about this sort of wow. thing and I was like you bitches think you're gonna get me you gotta I got a bad morning. foot I don't know we'll see <laughs> I need to I have started working out again I really enjoy strength training mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do a little cardio, but um, a lot of strength training. I got to build my endurance before I'm ready for any sort of run club bullshit. Because what I will do is run away from you guys, <laughs> find a restaurant and bar. Because we do be on the belt line. It yeah. is tempting. Oh, I will just dip off. Y'all got Apple Pay? Okay, cool. There was a group of people that did that. They were like, we're going to stop at the brewery and get beer. It's not and like I this... would be with them like, I found my people. <laughs> it's because it's not like this strict run club where somebody's right. like, get up. No, it's like, if you but do But when dip I off, do it, I want to do it for real. I don't want to quit, but I will. Yeah. I'm not afraid to quit yeah. if it needs to be done. But um, ask me again in a month. Maybe okay. I'll be ready. I will. Um, I also <laughs> attended the remembrance of my good girlfriend, Miss Jackie O. I mm -hmm. just want to shout out her best friend, Chi Chi. Leticia Marie Gardner. First of all, everybody needs a Chi Chi. She, we had a whole party for Jackie and you would have thought she was there. You oh, would have sweet. thought she was there. It was like... It was just this beautiful, very intimate gathering, and we shared stories about her. Everybody shared their favorite moments with her, how you met Jackie, and it was just so beautiful to sit there and see, like, Chi-Chi was like, I'm not, I'm not going to let 
her her memory died. Like this is go she's going to live on. We got big old cutouts of Jackie. Mm -hmm. I was really like, hey girl. <laughs> um, it was just a beautiful thing. Celebrate your friends if they're here, if they're not. If mm -hmm. you have a friend that you fell out with and deep down in your heart, you really want to talk to them again, reach out. Life is really too short. Mm -hmm. What you been up to? I have been um what have I been doing? Okay, so speaking of friends, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't really get to talk about it because we had guests last time we recorded, but um, two of my really good girlfriends came out to visit me, and I was so happy because usually I'm the friend who goes and visits everybody else mm -hmm. because a lot of my friends, life, their life is like moving fast. They got kids, husbands, um, really like hectic work schedules or really strenuous jobs and it's harder for them to go. And I'm just like, oh girl, I'll come. We don't even have to do nothing. We can sit at your house, whatever. So they called me randomly and was like, we're going to come to visit you if you're going to be in town. Are you going to be in town before we buy these flights? I was like, yeah, I actually have no Memorial Day plans. So they came. Um, we hung out at the house. I had a lot of plans for us to go out and do some different things. We did a little bit, but not a lot. And I really actually enjoyed that. And I'm glad that they were not like, oh, we got to be out. We got to do this stuff because I'd be tired. And it was just nice to have like good girlfriend time and like catch up on stuff and just talk about life. And um, I have been friends with them for so long. Like one of them, I've been friends with her since junior high school. And the other one, I met her in college. They're actually college friends. And then coming home for breaks and stuff is how we met. And then we found out we were cousins. Soraya, that was here. Mm. Yeah. So anyway, we had a good time. Her visit got extended. She was here last time we were recording and she was helping me with the dog and everything. It was just great. We went to Damsel. That was such a great experience. I think I mentioned it before, but you guys, if you're in Atlanta or you're visiting, I think it's a really cool spot to go to because it it's at? so different. It's at the works. Okay. And what I know they do like a performance. I saw a quick reel about it and a friend of mine went and I saw the performance, but I couldn't tell. Was it is it like a drag show? Is it burlesque? No, it's it's neither. It's like um more like a think like a 1920s club or lounge. Mm. And so they have like the lounge singer and you have these other dancers and stuff like that's what it's like. So you go, there's a, um, the menu is online, but it's a tasting menu. So everything you see on the menu, you're going to get some of. Mm -hmm. um, they are strict about reservation times because you can't sit there all night because the performances are rotating. So the singer might come up, she does her little number and then she's gone and it's just music playing. And mm -hmm. then the dancers might come up or it might be a singer and the dancers. And it just, it just goes throughout the night. They have cocktails, um, I mentioned that they have the tasting menu. They also have a few a la carte items that you can have. And then it's like a two hour, um, uh, two hour seating. But here's a hack. If you think that you might want to stay longer, pick one of the later reservations. Our reservation was for eight fifteen, So after us, nobody was going to have a reservation. So we could stay as long as we wanted. Okay. And then afterwards you can go upstairs to their rooftop lounge and they have like a dessert bar for you. That's included in what you pay. Oh. And there's another bar and then there's like an outdoor area. It's really cute. Um, if you're not able to get reservations or you know that you'd be missing your reservation all the time, just grab a seat at the bar. You can kind of see the performances, like a little sneak peek. It's not the greatest view, but you can see it. It's just really cool. And it's something different. There's no hookah. There is no... I like that because hookah brings a certain type of crowd, which you got to be in the mood to be around the hookah crowd. And they have music, but the music is not too loud. You can hear people talking. Mm -hmm. um, and I also like that the type of places you have to dress up. Oh. So everybody is dressed up. It just really gives me that feeling. If anybody has ever seen Boardwalk Empire, yes. I don't. Yes. Okay. So the club that mm -hmm. they have, mm -hmm. think like that. Oh, I love that. So everybody's dressed up and you've got these different performers who are there at this like club. It just feels, and, and I also think about, remember the movie, The Mask? Yes. How that girl was singing at that club and they have the big band. There is no big band. There is like a DJ situation, not a DJ, but. They have a sound system. I is wish they would have a big band. Okay, a few cool. questions. Is the food good? Yes. Now, I would never go there just for dinner, but it's it's enough. I would also eat before I come. Okay. So it's cool to taste it, but like that's not... Mm -mm. But there's so many other places in the area. Mm -hmm. Also, is it a good date night? It's great for a date night. Um, again, you got to dress up. So if you or your date doesn't really like that, 
this ain't for you because you do need to dress up and you will feel so out of place. Uh, well, one, they probably won't let you in because they do have a dress code. They have it everywhere. And it's not just a um, no sneakers type of dress code. Like, no, you need to dress up. Okay. Um, and people looked nice in there. You don't have to wear a suit, but. Look no, nice. Clean yeah. up. Yeah, um, it is a little pricey. I was just about to ask, how much are we thinking? Talking. So, okay, so it was three of us. I can't remember how much it was. Okay, I think it's like $125 per person mm. on Friday and Saturday night. That includes the tasting menu, your reservation to sit in the area where you can see the performers, right? Mm. And then the dessert bar. That does not include the cocktails. The drinks are going to be about $17 to $20-ish. So is the wine. Um now, they also tack on fees at the end. So there's like a regular gratuity, some sort of service charge, a gratuity for the performers, all this stuff. But everything's on there. Mm -hmm. So when it's done, it's like you don't have to do math at the table. But this is like a $200 a person date is what I would mm. say. Don't so, bring that cheap man. Don't bring yeah, it. So you, you, if you don't have a budget for like. $400, unless you don't drink, this isn't a place for you, but it's gonna, it, the experience is great. You're not gonna be there every Saturday night. Right. But it's cool and it's different and um, it's just cool. The girl who is the singer, I don't know if she's there every day and it's cheaper um, weekdays. Mm. So, you know, uh, you could try that too if, you know, maybe take her on a Wednesday instead of Saturday night. I also heard they got a happy hour at the uh, rooftop. They do. So that won't be the performances and stuff. And also, if you don't really care about the performances and you just want to go get dressed up and feel the vibes, they have like a uh, different menu upstairs mm -hmm. and the steak and stuff. And so you can go up there and do that. They do have a happy hour. And I just love that whole area, the works. I go there often, me and my baby. I was over there uh, somewhere and I ran into an old friend. He works at iHeart now. And I was like, oh, that is so funny to run into you here while I'm chomping on ribs. Um, so yeah, so I did that. And then following week, last weekend, I went to Louisiana. I've been talking about my grandma's 80th birthday party. Finally oh, happened. I don't want to cry. I was just cry. so happy. Well, we got another episode after this and I just did my makeup. What did Kim say? I don't want to cry over my fresh makeup. Um, I was just so happy for so long. My grandma can be like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be around for this. I hope I'm around for this. If the Lord sees to it that I see another day. And it's like, girl, stop talking like that. You're stressing me out. But she made it to 80. Uh, we were able to celebrate her. Five out of her six kids were there. Um, most of her grandkids were there. Her great-grandchildren were there. She had friends, old students, other relatives. So many people, cousins, nieces, all that. So many people showed up mm -hmm. to celebrate her. And it ended up storming in the middle of the party. And we just moved everything inside. And we still made it work. She was just so happy. She was crying all weekend. Oh, crying yeah. all weekend. And so I extended my stay. I was there until last night. Well, until yesterday morning, and then I made it back to Atlanta last night, but extended my stay. Now, I brought somebody with me on this mm, trip. A like friend a man of, friend. Yes, a man friend. And so y'all know I don't be bringing nobody around. Well, uh, somebody else invited him, not me. And I was like, well, it's fine. Uh, he can go. But when I say... I think that people think that I just try to be super secretive and private and stuff. My family says that. Y'all be saying that. Everybody says that. I Would you say trying... it's true? I or... am trying to protect people because I know that I have a crazy family. Let me tell y'all. They showed up and showed out. I'm still trying to convince him to share for the ride or dies his experience um, on the Kiki's family vacation I hope weekend. he does it. I hope he does. I'm going to try and do a little something special <laughs> so that I, I can entice him <laughs> to record it uh, because I think that that would be funny to hear his hear his perspective. We have a lot of women in our family. Y'all do. Um, and we have a lot of strong personalities in our family and um, very bossy people in our family. And that is a recipe for an interesting time. Um, I always think it's, it's funny to see people who you interact with like on a regular basis and how they might be different in a different group, a different environment. And you just be looking like, who is this person? 
What like is going the guy? On? Like when you bring Mm-mm, somebody around your family? Not him. Okay. I'm talking about family members. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, um, maybe when it's just me and you, you're one way. But now that there's other people around or certain relatives or whatever, it's different. And I'm just like, what is going on? It's just so much to soak up, especially if you like to be a people watcher. But I brought up the fact that we did that road trip together <clears throat> to say this. My grandma and um, one of my aunties assaulted him. <laughs> And by assaulted, yes, I mean, they was being fresh. I said, well, it's going to go one or two ways. Either people are not going to like you and they might be rude. I'm sorry in advance. Or they're going to be very flirty. It was on the flirty side. And that's the kind of assault I'm talking about. So they are looking at his tattoos. And they're like, oh, you got more tattoos. You got more tattoos. Next thing I know, my sister comes over to me and she's like, Kiki, uh, he needs some help. I turn around. I look. He's backed up against the wall. They're trying to take his shirt off. Oh, not like beat him up. They trying to cop a feel and see what's under that shirt. They said that he said he had all these tattoos and they wanted to see the rest of them. And I'm like, did he take his shirt off? No, he was looking scared. And he was like, I mean, do I do it? Do I not do it? What's going on? So then he told me I need to talk to him nice because they they might try to snatch him up. And I'm like, whatever. Anyway. It was just really funny because I wasn't sure if they would remember it the next day. It was very late, well past their bedtime. And the next day, my grandma says to him, I didn't forget. I didn't see the rest of those tattoos. And I'm like, y'all have got to cool it. Just calm down. Anyway. You know, when you get old, you can do whatever you want. Her (laughs) husband was sitting right there. So? She probably was like, so? My grandpa can't see, so I guess what he don't know won't hurt him, right? (laughs) Uh, My dad came to the party, so it was good to see him. And he's doing a lot better, moving around and stuff. Um, What else? It was good spending time with my nieces. My youngest niece, she used to not really fuck with me. She used to be like, leave me alone. Uh, but now she just loves me so much. I really don't know if it's me or Whitley, my dog, but mm. whatever. I'll take a win where I can get one. She is really funny. And just to watch her personality bloom as she gets older, the girl cracks me up. Uh, she was cracking jokes all weekend and just doing little funny things. And it's just so cute to see. And I love being able to spend time with them. She tried to uh, come back home with me and I was like, no, I have been being a mama to Walker. A you got to go to your mama, sweet baby. I, I, Auntie needs a break. I can't okay. do this all summer. I cannot. I need to drink alcohol. I want to go do things with my friends. Yeah. And, uh, a lot of things. I so. want to wake up late and be able to go to bed late. I got to turn the TV off because your little ass is here. <laughs> and so, yeah, I told her she could come in July, maybe. We could spend a little week together. And she's like, I'll be in Miami. And I'm like. The baby said that? They're going to Miami for a family trip. Mm. Um, and I was like, well, again, you can come visit me in July. That's the slot I got open. But it was just great having so much family time. Um Family time is fun time. Whether, it really is. Whether you're going to somebody else's family or you have somebody come to your family, it's just it, it it's just so much fun, especially seeing what people's roots look like. Yeah. And uh when we drove around. Did you ask anybody if they knew Pastor Mayo so well? I forgot. Ask Damn it. Sean after this. Okay, I'll ask. Um, I totally forgot about that. Damn it. I hate that I did that. Um, I didn't, but Dang, I lost my train of thought. Anyway, it was good to be back there. It was interesting to see how different things look and all of that. Uh, My mom was cutting up at the party in a good way. (laughs) My mom can be really, really fun. Maybe some of you guys have been to a live show or something and you met her. Um, She was being so fun and she was flirting with my daddy. Oh, (laughs) I was like... Oh my gosh, cut it out. What's going on? Like, stop this. I don't know. Like, how many shots did you have? She was in charge of the bar. Mm-hmm. So when I walked in, she's like, it's shot o'clock. I don't know how many times the clock struck shot o'clock for her, but it was a lot. It was a time. It was just a time. And uh, I won't be throwing any more birthday parties for family members if I have to plan them in groups with anyone besides my siblings. Uh, but I'm glad that our last party went out <laughs> with a bang. Uh, and that's that's the positive of it. Um, we road tripped back. Mm-hmm. Uh, I stopped at a lot of places. Alabama has a lot of barbecue places. Don't they? And I love barbecue, but I'm like, God damn, do y'all eat anything else? Just ribs. (laughs) Y'all gonna have gout. (laughs) Probably so. Um, 
But we stopped at um, a rib place, well, a barbecue place somewhere in Alabama, found a Bucky, stopped at Bucky's, and then we took the scenic route. I didn't realize, I, it's been a long time since I took geography. I didn't realize there were like mountain situations in Alabama. And I was like, why Is would you come Is it the Smoky this- Mountains or am I making that up? Because doesn't the Smoky Mountains, is that Tennessee? Don't get- Maybe mm-hmm. Tennessee. Yeah. I don't know. Don't get me to lying, me girl. Um, it's something. Uh, but I was like, it's giving from. Have you ever seen the show from? I have, but then I stopped watching because they started trying to charge. And I was like, absolutely not. Okay, well, it's all free on Amazon Prime right now. Oh. Since the season is not current, it's all on there. Um, it's two seasons. Please, y'all, watch it. I want to talk about it. I love That's that That's why you show. keep getting stuck and you're stuck in the little world and the monsters come. Mm-hmm, okay. at nighttime. And we were driving somewhere and um, I was like, this looks like this would be the portal. And then after we drive through there, we were in a town. I think it's called Ragland, Alabama. And I was like, oh, my God, this looks like from Bass the School, Bass the Library. <laughs> this shit looks dead. Are there any people? Then the people who are out there are just standing there looking. Like when the families first come. Was it just, white people? Like, was it racism? Okay. Well, I don't know if it was racism. I mean, I saw Trump flag, so I've got a good guess. But they were just white people and they're just outside. But I'm like, am I just tripping? But everybody's just looking or just stuck. And I was like, if I don't make it home, I'm going to be very upset. And then we found like, <laughs> there's a big body of water. I don't know what it was, but I've been seeing a lot of stories on the news about um, bridges collapsing or people driving off the bridge and shit. And it's scaring me. And so it looked like a dam, but I'm like, this is the middle of fucking Alabama. What body of water is this? GPS thing, Waze or whatever on the car play is frozen. We can't see the map. I was just like, please let me make it out. But I made it out. I didn't get stuck in Fromville, thank God. Mm. Um, and then we got back late and I was motherfucking tired, okay? I'm still tired and I'm trying to pick it up. Um, what else happened? I guess that's all I've done. I don't know. If I think of anything else, it'll come to me. Okay, okay. Um, well, on that note, I guess we can move on to weird sex and then get into whatever else we're talking about today. You said a man is not... A necessity, a man is a luxury. Like dessert. <laughs> yeah. A man is absolutely not a necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. All right, you guys. So uh, this week's Weird Sex. If you're a patron, we talked about this on the Patreon Live, but there was a wild story that I heard about. And it started off with a woman saying that she took a DNA test. Oh, Lord. This is pretty uh, fraud. Well, it's not fraud, but that's how it kind of starts off. So she has a child who is five years old. I can't remember what the reason was, but her husband took a DNA test and found out through the DNA test that that is not his child. She swears up and down she didn't cheat, all this stuff. So I'm like, girl, were you like fucked up and you cheated and you don't remember? Like, what kind of life are you living? Or did Jesus do it? I do be wondering, like, why we all believe Mary? Okay, so... (laughs) It uh, because she wasn't a virgin, so and Mary was anyway. She's like stressed and she's on Reddit writing the internet. And I know y'all be stressed when y'all write us because the moment you take to the internet to write strangers about a problem, it is really is really got you fucked up, you know. And I get it because I have Googled some crazy things before. Have you ever written into a podcast? I have not. Okay. Have you? Yeah. Oh well. (laughs) What'd you write about? I wrote about when I was when I was um, dating Carlos. Mm-hmm. If y'all are OG listeners, then you know I had a boyfriend at the beginning of this show, and I was like, I started really missing just being with a black man, and mm-hmm. I was like, is this wrong to be like? <laughs> and I sent it to the receipts podcast. <laughs> That's funny. Um, no, I haven't, but uh, who knows what the future holds? Anyway, so. She's writing into Reddit and she's like, can somebody help me? Like, what are the reasons I've got a doctor's appointment coming up, but I just have no idea. And he has moved into the other bedroom. Like, I don't want to lose my husband. I know everybody thinks I'm crazy, but I really did not cheat. Not ever. Like, I love my husband, all this stuff. And I'm like, this bitch is motherfucking lying. What kind of drugs is she on? Does she think she can pray it away? Well, they go to the doctor. So she's updating the thing. 
She goes to the doctor and she takes the test too. Cause mm-hmm. she's like, something ain't right. I don't know if it was a faulty test or what. So they all get tested again. How about it's not her baby either? So how about this five-year-old child that they have been taking care of from the hospital to now is not biologically their child. So they're trying to figure out how could this be? Is mm-hmm. it? Is this another faulty test? Like, what the fuck? I gave birth to a baby. How is this not my baby? Well, they switched the baby. I wonder the ba- if the husband apologized. Like, man, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. she said that they talked about it and they it was a sigh of relief and they were able to work through that. Mm-hmm. But now they're like, where the fuck is our baby? Because I was pregnant. I gave birth to a baby who was alive. What happened to my baby? Mm -hmm. And what we going to do with this one? You know, and where did she come from? (laughs) Because is somebody going to want to take her away? You know, like this is somebody else's baby technically. So anyway, um, she she continues to update and she says that she finds out that they switched the babies at the hospital somehow and that... The other child, their actual child, went to a home and the child was not being well taken care of. The child got taken by Child Protective Services and is now in foster care. And something happened and they had to do a DNA test amongst that family. And they found out that they were not the biological family. So they, um, the child was never going to be returned to them. They were already mistreating the child. And this child is five years old, too. So once they track her down, they begin the adoption process to take this child home. And they said that they were just going to adopt her and tell the daughter that they already have. They'll keep her, too, because she can't go to the abusive family either. Right. Um, That they have a new she has a new sister coming. And I'm just like, that is so wild. And your husband thought he cheated on you. And now y'all going through this dramatic shit. That is just so wild. I don't know what I would do. Yes, she sued. She got um, a little under $2 million. I wish she would have gotten more, but that is a nice, you know, cushion. I want you to name the hospital after me. Yeah. Um, I want a lot. Yeah, because this is crazy. And who the fuck was at work? Yeah. I need to speak to you. What like was this. You doing? Come sit down. Like, how do you? I just don't understand in today's times how you mix up a baby. I really think people I think you do attention. it on purpose. You think? Because if they they tag the babies and the mamas, and like now it's not even like you gotta read the names, you're scanning stuff. Unless somebody just wasn't paying attention. You're over here. Cause first of all, I saw that this weekend at the Thompson Hotel, it's talking about nurses of Atlanta pool party takeover. Don't y'all need to be at the hospital. They got days off. It don't oh, matter. Work three days a this week. This is crazy. Y'all don't need to be hosting parties like this. What? It is literally the nurses of Atlanta. Cause babies is getting switched up. They're y'all not on y'all, the clock. Y'all at so work. Nurses y'all can't are, have a life. Y'all are at work posting the flyer on Instagram scrolling. You need to be scanning the baby tags because now we got two babies and I only wanted one. This is crazy. <sighs> it really was crazy. And I'm just like, then I think I just, I could never get over that because now my real baby has been abused and I've been over here loving on your baby. She didn't even have to get all this good loving. Mm-hmm. She could, I mean, I would hate for her to be in a bad situation too, but like, come on. Babies are expensive. Babies are. And then you don't know like what genes, like what characteristics. Because now I know your parents abuse It's crazy. Like, you, like mm. is that something that's going to be handed down? Now can I watch? Are you going to be jealous of your new sister? Then I'm going to be reading all the stuff about nature versus nurture. And I'm just going to be scared. And I'm going to have to sleep with one eye open for the rest of my life. I'm probably going to spend way too much money on under eye filler and Botox and shit. And might die an early death. Have you, don't say that. Ooh. Have you ever seen um, The Good Son? This is an old movie. You know, I love old movies. It's called that The Good Son. sounds familiar. Macaulay What's it Culkin about? is in it. A, a little kid, Macaulay Culkin. And that little nigga is evil. It's oh, I'm thinking about movie. The Good Doctor. No, this I haven't seen The Good This is called The Good, good Son. Son. If you guys haven't watched it, watch it. It's such a good watch. So the mom, she has two sons. But I, it, she, one is either a stepson or a half sibling with the other one. They bring them together. They're living a great life. One of the sons is evil and one of them's good. But he's not like omen evil. He's just like, he seems like he's a good kid. He's smart. He does his little- He's a little he's, sneaky. He's a little sneaky, but he's sneaky and trying to kill the other little boy. Girl. Well, that's is, evil. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know how with the with the omen child, it's like it turned into like devilish and he was possessed. He was just a little bad, smart little boy. Anyways, it's such a good movie. And it just reminded me of that. Like what the little kids grow up and one is like, 
Mm-hmm. Bitch, this is in my blood to, to just, be. Yeah, you just <laughs> never know. Yeah. Anyway, sorry to that family. Um, y'all check your babies at the hospital and, and nurses, watch what you're doing, please. I just can't okay. wait until I have a baby and I'm like, give me my baby. I just can't wait to say those words. <laughs> what? I'm, I can't wait to be like, give me my baby. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Oh, anyway, that's it for weird sex. If y'all even find these crazy Reddit stories, that one didn't have a whole lot of sex, but it started with sex, so don't be getting mad. Um, everything starts with sex. Now, if you have a story, please send it in. And I really want to know if y'all have been doing some weird shit. Have you tried some weird shit and had a weird experience? Maybe you thought it was going to be cocktail, but it just really was weird. Send that in. I don't mind sharing those because I want to know what the fuck y'all be doing because people are into some shit, okay? I saw some people at Hedonism on Twitter. Well, X, formerly known as Twitter, over the weekend. And this girl, I said, I know this hedonism. I recognize the blue towels and this beach and all these naked people. Mm -hmm. This girl was on her back, pussy tooted in the air, legs back. And this guy was like pouring tequila on her pussy and Mm. letting it run down the back and drinking it. And I'm like, tequila already has a strong taste. Why is this what you want? You want pussy tequila. And then why would you let that run down in there? That doesn't burn. She had a lot of piercings and stuff. I don't know. I just wouldn't do it. It seems like it could cause a nasty infection. A very nasty infection. She might be used to it, though. Sometimes (sighs) when you got stank puss, you just used to it. There was a girl I went to junior high with. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Excuse me. (sighs) There was a girl I went to junior high with. I wonder where she's at now in this world. I won't call her out because this is embarrassing. But she always just stunk. Mm-hmm. Stank like her cootie cat stunk or just everything. Everything she should have had Lumi, and it was just really sad because she everybody was mean to her and like mm-hmm. because she was stanky and I wasn't mean to her like I I, I did want her to back up sometimes because she was funky but she was I asked her one time just because I needed to know you know I'd be asking questions and I was nice but I was like you smell like this because it would be like after the gym we all showered and she she was like I you know. I got I have some sort of disorder, but now I realize she had a bacterial infection and she just didn't ever like her parent, her mom or somebody just didn't take her to get it. Yeah, taking care of out. Cause y'all got we were really at hedonism. Sometimes, sometimes me and Bay will just be like walking through the park or something, and he'll just be like, well, You really had me in hedonism walking with my dick slanging in the pool, scooting past other niggas with their dicks like booty cheeks sliding <laughs> past each other. We were really all in the pool just having a naked conversation. Yeah, and I was there a lot. I only saw you one time. (laughs) Listen, if we ever have kids, I really do wonder like what parts of my life I'm going to share with them and pray they don't, podcasts aren't around no more. (sighs) They'll be able to find it. Anything on the internet is forever. Um, Hopefully they won't be interested. You know, like sometimes you hear stories or you're around for your parents to share stories. Like, eh, maybe it'll be like that. Mm -hmm. They won't even want to hear it. Yeah. So you guys know that we are advocates for good good sex So you guys know that we are advocates for good sex, healthy sex, and healthy vaginas. So we want you to make every encounter slipperier, sexier, and downright sensational. (laughs) Sensational. (laughs) Y'all, it's time to get soaking wet. It's hot outside. It's the summertime. And with Soaking Wet from VB Health, you can rejuvenate your vagina. It packs, it's packed with a lot of probiotics, prebiotics, vitamins that just make you juicy and delicious. It's like sending your vagina to the spa. You need that. I like the idea of a vagina spa. That mm-hmm. sounds very um, exhilarating. I think it's really important to have great vaginal health. And sometimes, you know, you worry about everything else with your body, your skin. Mine has been acting up, so it's been stressing me out. Your skin, your gut, ev- your hair, your nails, mm-hmm. everything else. And as much as we love to use our vaginas, maybe even brag on them a bit, you've got to take your supplements to make sure that everything is in perfect working order. VB Health has a simple mission to create supplements that work. And that's what's most important. So for our listeners, they have delivered a very special offer. If you visit soakingwet.com and use code COCKTAILS, C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S, you will get 10% 10 off or just click the link in the description box below and it will take you to the website and you can get that discount. 
Yes. Sorry, you guys. Yeah, sometimes I'll hear a song or like something will happen that will remind me of that place. Yeah, good old hedonism. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, you guys should attend with the worst behavior tour if you can. Um, okay, Kiki. So we'll just jump into a I was scrolling through Instagram. <gasps> Bless you. Thank you. I know. It's so awful. Your sneeze said, I want the spotlight. It did. And it's like, bitch, this is not a Zyrtec commercial. Relax. But Zyrtec, <laughs> if you're watching and you have some stronger meds that I can take, send them on. <laughs> We'd love a new sponsor. <laughs> um. So I was watching the Let's Try This Again podcast, B. Simone's new podcast. Okay. She played this game. And she's played it a few times with certain people. It's not like a consistent play. like, But they played this. And I thought it was so funny. So you basically play this with one other person. And you try to say... You both say a word at the same time to see if you are like, um, like synced in a sense. So you count to three, you go one, two, three, and y'all both just say a word. We're not going to even say like a, a theme, no a topic. There's no categories, nothing, just say it. You just say a word. You do it like three times in a row to see if we get anything alike, to see if like we are kind of like synced since you spend so much time with the person. Okay. So I was like, I want to do this with Kiki to just see where we're at with, <laughs> to see where we're at with our sync. I don't mess. think this is going to go well. Let's see. We should have done this for the second episode. After <laughs> we can do together. it again. Okay. <laughs> Okay, 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 we can try. So we, I'm going to count to three, and after the three, we'll just say the word. Okay. Any word that okay. is coming to your mind. Okay, 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 okay. okay. One, two, three. Sneeze. Beyonce. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's do it again. Okay. One, two, three. Dogs. Titties. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll try it one more time. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, one, two, three. Cocktails. Family. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, you guys, we, we didn't are get not in sync. I am not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do it. We didn't do. It. I when I saw her do, I was like, "This is funny." I went to try it with my family and my sister and yeah. everybody, but um, that was fun. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so. I wanted to know, I was scrolling through Instagram, uh, literally before I got here in the car and I saw a post, I don't know who posted it. And it was what, it was asking the ladies, what is something that immediately attracts you to a man that you don't know? A nice smile. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, mm -hmm. you're just smiling mm -hmm. at anything, especially me. But yeah, yeah, a nice smile, a nice. confident smile. Ooh. Not a nervous smile, because sometimes those look a little quivery in the corners. Yeah. Oh, she's coming Ooh, for your toes. Ooh, little toe licker. Whitley's here. I don't know if you guys can see her, but she loves licking toes. I got some treats for you, baby girl. Um, she was out there cutting up with her little country cousins, and I'm just glad she's not barking. Oh, it was other, other dogs. It wasn't just, what's the name, Stormy? Shadow. Shadow. No, my grandparents have dogs, mm. um, and one of them is big. And his name is Zap, and he was not fucking with my girl. And I was like, if you don't get it together, I'm gonna beat your ass because I don't play about my baby. Okay? Well, oh, like he was trying to get her, like nipple. yeah, he was trying to get her. And so she's like trying to play, and then she was like, whoa, he's big. I think her depth perception might be off because I noticed this a lot with the big dog. She runs up, and then when she gets close and sees how fucking big they are, she's like, hold up, and she will like run up my legs, and it's like I can catch her, or she's just gonna be here already, like hanging on. Oh. Um, but yeah, here you go, sweetie. Okay, and then what anyway. is an what is an immediate thing that is you're not attracted? Like it's um, if you have trouble making eye contact. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like I, there have been a few instances where I saw somebody who physically they were attractive, right? But then upon further looking, maybe I notice if it's a restaurant or something when the waiter is talking to you, you're having trouble making eye contact. And mm -hmm. it's not because you're looking at the menu and trying to make sure that you're reading you're the just... right thing or something like that. It's just like you have that weird thing. I also don't like when you don't speak clearly. Mm. That boils my blood, especially like when you're trying to communicate with somebody, whether it's ordering something or a conversation, speak up. Mm -hmm. I don't like that. It's I don't instant like, turn off. Um, oh, I'm real big into posture. Mm -hmm. I If I'm out and you real fine and you're sitting down or even standing, some people have bad posture standing, um, but you're sitting down and you're just kind of like this. I'm not talking about if you have some, some like you have a disorder, but you just, this is just how you sit. Uh huh. What happened? <laughs> Say it, which sit up. Women too. It's like, that is wildly insane to just be, where are you from? 
Well, I'll be like slouching that. when I got cramps. I'll be in pain. I, I can't slouch and, mm. unless I'm purposely trying to slouch. And I'm, I don't like it, but it happens. I would just be like, I really want to ca- crawl up in the fetal position. Yeah, the, the pageant girl in me won't let it happen. Also, mm. another thing, and this is everybody, men and women, if I'm trying to be your friend or fuck with you in a romantic way, um, I don't like when people don't speak when people come into a room. If it's like a situation where like, let's say we're here right now and like a, one of your friends comes in, one of Warren's friends come in, Sandra's friend come in, my friend, and like you don't, you don't speak. I don't mm. like when people do this. That's weird behavior to me. It's like, bro, your soul ain't right. You need to get it together. <laughs> like, because there are people that will really just be like in a room and it's like somebody walks in and like, even if they speak to you, you just don't, you don't, you don't speak. It's, that's weird. You, you wait, come into a room. Even if they speak and then they don't speak back either. Yeah. You've never seen people do that where someone will come in and just be like, hey, you know, how y'all doing? And like somebody will just be like, I yeah, say so, I think a lot of weird. girls do that. Or if you come into a room and it's like, you don't speak to people. Like we all know I that. I think it's when like, you come into a room, you should speak, right? Even if it's a quick, well, you don't got to go hold a whole Oprah interview. Or if, I don't even think you have to do like individual speeches. It's like, hey, everybody. And, you know, say something. You walked into a room and there's people there. Yeah. It, um, it makes me want to talk about your parents. Like, Oh. Man, they didn't raise you It right. doesn't bother me that much. But it's just like, okay, I'm not feeling this. And I just, uh, we can give it back. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. that's one of them situations where it's like you date somebody like that. Y- y'all know I'm always going to take it just thinking real deep. Now I bring you around my family and you come in not speaking. First of all, you're going to get cussed work. out. Yeah. Second of all, you need to go home because this is not what we're doing. I couldn't imagine. It would be like everybody's going to be jumping on you. Yeah. And someone in my family would say, you don't speak when you come in the room. Now we're all embarrassed. It would be my mama. She would be the one to say something. It like, would be my Aunt Gia mm-hmm. or my Aunt PG. Mm-hmm. And you need those people that are going to say it because everybody else is going to side eye and talk about you. Some of them will wait until you leave. Some won't. Just never know. Now we're just all sitting here awkward. You uh-huh. go try to make a plate. Be like, oh, no, wait, but you didn't want to talk. Put the plate down. Okay. What you coming in here at? <laughs> oh, now you can see me. You want something to eat? You're hungry? It's a Zaxby's up the street. <laughs> now, and, and then they lock looking, the door. Then they turn to you like, so why are you with somebody who's not speaking to people? Oh, now I haven't had that experience. Thank God. I would me be embarrassed. Neither. I don't play that because I'm nipping that. If I get with a nigga, you just really don't talk. I can't imagine do this. if somebody did that, you didn't know that they did that. Like they had never done it before. And then they did that. I would be ashamed. I would have to pull you aside. Yeah. Yeah. We got to have a conversation. Um, anyways, we're going to move on to Indecisive Diane. And when we come back, we're going to read an advice letter to you guys and try to help you. Quinn is crafted for women by women. They believe every woman deserves to experience restorative self-care. And so do I. Just when I thought I had too many vibrators and I was like, I'm not (laughs) getting any more. No, baby. No, no, no. Y'all, Quinn has a groove dual-sided heating vibrating wand. Wait a minute. That's just like the real thing. Bro. And it it has that weight on it. So it feels like a little body is attached. It has 12 modes. Five speeds on both the head and the tail. So you're getting like an overall, the whole thing is t- basically moving. Mm-hmm. Um, it's perfect for G spots and clitoral stimulation. It's rechargeable, waterproof. It comes in a sleek green peach design. I thought I was getting a vegetable. That's how clean the packaging looks. Like I thought it was from Whole Foods. It's not. <laughs> this is Quinn Wellness. I love a good wellness product. Like I just love that. The it's made by women for women. It is it, it, you can tell that there was thought and soul put into the product that mm-hmm. matters. It really does. I uh, I haven't tried my vibrator just yet, but I have tried the lube and I do like mm. it. It feels really good. It's made from aloe. I just love now being more aware of the things that I'm putting on my body in my body and things like that. I want to be careful about everything. I don't want a bunch of toxic like crap Mm -hmm. on me or in me or the people person I'm having sex with. So it's really important to pay attention to those things. And Quinn has amazing products. You guys need to make sure you check out their website. We have a special offer for our listeners. If you check the description box, you can click the link there and you can head on over to Quinn to make your purchases. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What do you want? What do you want? (laughs) 
Hey ladies, it's me, Diane, and listen up. It's the heat of the summertime. I hope that your date consists of some outside activities. You need to get your vitamin D. I want you to go to Tacoa Falls, Georgia. It's kind of a hike, but not really. You just walk up to the waterfall, have a picnic, have good conversation, maybe take some iced coffee, a bottle of rosé, get to know someone for a change. Bye. It's time to make a move. Love to Play, the biggest online gaming destination, has opened up 500, that's right, 500 more exclusive slots so you can experience the excitement of Vegas anytime you want, right from your phone. Picture the thrill of Vegas right at your fingertips. When, wherever you are, whether you're unwinding at home, on the go, or even during a little work break, love to play as a game that's perfect for you. I love playing games on my phone. And I love Vegas. Mm -hmm. And if your man can't afford to take you to Vegas and you can't afford to take yourself to Vegas, or if you got a gambling problem and you don't want to go and tempt it, you could do it right from your phone. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> this, this is totally different. It's all about just having fun playing games. With theme slot games that whisk you away to magical and classic games that offer that authentic Vegas feel. Love to Play has it all, but it's not just about the games. At Love to Play, you'll join a lively, inclusive community where you can make lasting friendships and create unforgettable memories. That's way better than even getting on a plane, being around people who are just too drunk to do anything or smoke a cigarette in your face. Like all the things that you don't want to experience about Vegas, you don't have to worry about that with Love to Play. Also, if you're one of those people where you just want to fake like you're doing something on your phone, I love a good game. Mm -hmm. Love to Play, is, listen, it's interactive and you'll have a good time and uh, you, you should turn your downtime into fun time. Visit L-O-V-E, the number two, P-L-A-Y, that's love to play and claim 50 free spins if exclusively for the first 500 users using the promo code COCKTAILS, that's C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S, on their very first deposit. <laughs> <laughs> so tell your friends, tell your family, tell everybody, your coworkers, and don't miss out on your biggest payday yet. The adventure awaits at Love to Play, where you can find the excitement in every day. And we are back from Indecisive Diane. We have one advice letter this week. If you guys would like to get some, if you need some advice from us, send an email to cocktails at cocktailspod.com. Okay, this one is titled The Baby Has Autism. I felt so weird reading this. Did you read it? Mm -mm. Hey, ladies, I'm going to get straight to it because I'm struggling. I'm struggling typing this message to stop myself from breaking up with my boyfriend in real time. Oh. So when I met my boyfriend, he was going through a custody battle. So we were able to lock in without much disruption. Mm -hmm. hmm. However, I was preparing myself for the day that he got full custody. So about two months ago, he started having his daughter every day, which is fine. And I'm in full support. She said, I am in full support. Hmm. Where Sounds like you're not going <laughs> to be, but we'll see. Where I am contemplating, take the whole lid off. I can't get the top off. Okay. Um, where I am contemplating my graceful exit is the girl is autistic, undiagnosed and ignored by her dad. She is two years old, does not respond when spoken to or even recognize her own name. She doesn't sleep through the night and just screams, not being funny, but just mad MRDD noises. I don't know what that means. Mm, that's what I think. Um, MRDD. Like, I, if that's more. not what it is, <laughs> I have no idea I'm going to feel so I, crazy if it's like a medical term I feel, or something. <laughs> here I am. Well, one thing we know is the listeners are going to correct us in this. Period. So just let us know. I love learning new things. <laughs> Far more than I bargained for, which is saying a lot because I've nannied and babysat all types of kids since I was 15 years old. This issue is, the more that I think, like when she just said like babysitting at 15 years old, I used to babysit too, like 13 years old. And the more that I think about that, it's like I would never let a 13 
13 year old or a 15 year old wash my baby. Especially these 13 year olds. Especially we these. probably weren't that bad, but these, I'm just like. You might be raw. The water boys are sitting on the couch when you get home. I'm just like, they all act like little kids. To me, ain't nobody. You don't maturing. know where the baby's at. They don't switch your baby out. For, You're just playing video games. They're making TikToks on the kitchen counter. The baby's head is busted. He's crying for help in the background. <laughs> they door dashed alcohol. Uh uh-uh. uh. Or Instacarted groceries on my account. How did you even get my shit, you little scammer? They found the spare key to the car. They rolling around. Y'all got to Woo! get. Ain't no kids uh-uh. watching my kid. No. This issue is major, but otherwise, he is everything that I asked God for. All the things I've wanted in my forever partner. We've spoken about the future, and I was preparing to get on his health insurance pretty soon. <laughs> That's what it's really about. Now we're getting to the meat of it. Now you need to get on that health insurance. The Cobra didn't really do what you thought it was going to do. And you need benefits. Okay, let's Ooh. talk about it, girl, because this is real life. Now we're cooking with uh, fire. Keep in mind that I'm 27 with no kids and no insurance and don't want to block my blessings. The question, <laughs> the question is, do y'all think I'm supposed to tough this out because nothing is perfect and without risk, there's no reward? Or should I leave before it's too late? Sign that baby can't go nowhere with me because <gasps> my kids don't act like that. Wait a minute. How many kids she got? She don't have no kids. She's trying to so, be funny, but that the baby. Oh, she's just I was saying, now hold on, little mama. Yeah, she don't. She said she's twenty seven <laughs> with no kids, and then I said, and no insurance. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So valid concern. The the humor in the letter is like maybe that's just your personality but mm-hmm. I, I, less and it's us. We're not therapists. We're not. And like we also don't have kids and but I'm telling you right now I can't do the kid. I learned early on that I can't really take anyone seriously especially not marry if you have children. Like, I think that when you find yourself in situations like this, like, what exactly did you ask God for? Because sometimes people are like, he's everything that I ask God for. But now he has an autistic baby and you're like, I don't, this, I don't want to do this, which is fine. You don't have to do it. But I think you need to go back to the, the, the building, the build a man portal and like rewrite and be very specific on like, you just don't want him to have kids because- you, you're like, do I tough this out? I don't think you tough this out. You already in here talking shit about the baby. You're talking shit about a two-year-old who has autism. No, you don't tough this out. You let it go and you got to find what you really do want. Because I think when people- A job with insurance. Yeah. Because if you're holding on to him just for insurance, bro, this is a recipe for a whole disaster. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, girl. What you said was kind of fucked up. Like, I can laugh about it. We can hee hee ha ha. But ask yourself this do you want kids? Now I'm gonna be, I'm gonna have to be the serious one. I hate when this fucking happens. I should have answered first. Um, do you want kids for yourself? There's a possibility that you could have a child with autism or some other disability. People love. And you don't have insurance. That too. And. There are so many things that can happen with a child. Some things you'll find out about ahead of, you could find out about while they're still in your room. Some of them you can't. Are you going to love your child any less? Now, I'm not saying you got to love this man's baby because this is not your baby. But I am saying if you are going to stick it out, especially to be on his damn insurance. Now he goes from an individual plan to a family plan where he already got the baby. So, well, I don't know. But you got to be on there. Or you want to be on there and you want him to take care of your medical benefits and whatever else. And you want to be this family unit. But now it's a problem because you have diagnosed the child with autism because it could be something else. You don't know that it's autism if the child hasn't been diagnosed. There's a lot of other things. I think right now autism is something that um, we keep hearing about and they keep talking about. Mm -hmm. So everybody, everybody thinks that every developmental or learning delay is ADHD, um, dyslexia, and autism. And there's so many other things that it could be right. But what we do know is you don't want to deal with it. I don't think you're wrong for not wanting to deal with it at all. Don't get me wrong, but I do think you would be wrong to stay in this relationship. You're upset about the baby. Guess what? Some kids talk late. It doesn't mean that they have that. And maybe they do. And some people are going to learn a little bit later. They are delayed in a lot of ways. We joke about people being delayed, but some people really fucking delayed. And that's just what it is. You don't have the patience for it. You don't want to deal with it. You're 27. You don't have your own children. Maybe you'll feel differently if it's your actual flesh and blood but it's not and i think that that's going to cause a big problem later i think you need to end this relationship 
Don't do that to that baby or to that man. Yeah. That like, was, you don't want to be there. And and, just and that's to, a lot to deal with. Mm-hmm, to bring it back home, <clears throat> to to my home. When I was dating an ex and he had kids, and I thought, I, this is when I was trying to be like, maybe I can do the kid things because there's so there's so many great men out here that, that got kids. And I this is just cool. And I realized I really can't do this because when I would get around the kid, I realized my whole energy changed. I was annoyed. I was mad. And it's a kid. I was like, I can't do this to somebody. Like, yeah. I just can't. You can't be having an attitude around a 10 year old just because he here just because he was born you right. can't do that like you gotta because they're not talking and they up at night you, like you shit. gotta be self aware and if you decide to like this first of all this is just your boyfriend so if you want to end it end it but if you were to, to to get more serious and you'd create a marriage you are accepting each other for who you are. like you're taking his life and making it a part of yours and vice versa Including at least that's what y'all supposed child. to be doing and taking in the kids and treating it like it's your own if there is even an ounce of a doubt that you can't do that you so, gotta go with you. or without insurance mm-hmm you really do. So I hope that you break up with him um, swiftly and gently. Um, and I hope that you really talk to yourself and figure out if you can deal with going forward. Can you date a man with children? I can. But I do understand that there are limits to that. what is going on with that child. And some stuff I can deal with, some stuff I can't. Mm-hmm. The beauty of it is it ain't your baby. So nobody's going to say nothing if you say fuck that baby and move on with your <laughs> life. It's still men out here with no kids. It is. Even if it doesn't seem like it. And it you is. also don't have to have a man right now. You could work on going to Indeed.com <laughs> and looking for a new job with insurance. I hope you don't have any um, health conditions. And you got to get the insurance before you start ha- fucking around having pre-existing conditions. And then they want to deny your claims and stuff. Girl, get out there. It's real. And it's cancer and everything. Be safe. <laughs> All right. So if anybody else needs some advice, um, ask yourself if you already know the answer in the mirror first. Still uh, send it. Yeah, still send it. it. But ask yourself. And if you know the answer, but you still want to send it, like add a little razzle dazzle, make it funny like she did, because you know you need to leave that man. Okay. And the email is advice at cocktailspot.com. Okay, so that's it for the advice. And it's time to move on to your favorite part of the show, the cocktails. Uh-huh. 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 All right. If you have a cocktail and you would like to share it with us on the show and have our listeners hear your freak nasty experiences or maybe how you embarrassed the fuck out of yourself and you had to relocate to Nebraska, Mm. email us cocktails at cocktailspod.com. Okay. So this one says, y'all ain't going to believe this shit. I probably won't. All right. Hey, ladies, I've been a listener for the past year. And first of all, I love you both. Thank you. I've had my own podcast, so I understand all the hard work and commitment it takes to build what you've built. Okay, now let's get to it. So I started a new consulting job recently here in Atlanta. Congratulations. The woman I'm working for is super sweet and generous. Are you about to fuck your boss? Okay, let me just stay focused. She literally got me front row tickets to see Beyonce last year. Mm, Just so you can gauge her. And me too. Me too. Tag team. All right. Anyway. I've been really stressed lately as I've lost a close family member and had to plan her services and hold my family together. Oh, I was getting ready to fly back home last week and the woman I'm working for offered to send me to the spa, her treat, to try and relax before handling heading into chaos with my family. I gladly accepted and made an appointment for the day before I was scheduled to leave town. I get to the spa and it was really nice, calm, quiet, and very upscale. I checked in and waited to go back. After a few minutes, I was greeted by a muscular and very handsome man who said he would be my masseuse for my session today. Is she a fairy godmother or your boss? What's going on? I don't like it if a masseuse is too sexy coming to rub on me. You got to Because this is... What is... You need to give me somebody ugly and foreign. Oh, I'm, I want him from Turkey. Turkey, nigga Some can't of those speak. Turkish men are fine. Like the man who owns... I don't want to find man. one. Mm-mm. Hey. Okay. Um, we entered the room and he asked me to undress and lay face down. I did, as I was told, by stripping completely naked and getting onto the massage table face down. When he returned, he immediately got to work. At first touch, I could feel his hands trembling. I wondered if I made him nervous. He started to rub my back and quickly found his hands massaging my ass too. 
Now, I'm no stranger to massages, so I found his attention to my hat as interesting, but I continued to lay there and enjoy his touch. He continued to rub my body, but in the most, uh, the most sensual way. I felt this heat rising between us, but I kept dismissing the thought, deciding maybe I was just horny and tripping. He started to massage my arms, and while he did so, he Wait, held arms. my hand. What? Have you ever been getting a massage when you are like, are we about to have sex? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. No, I've actually never had a man give me a massage. It's always women, and they're very unattractive. And so it's just like, bitch, you thought I had a man one I had time. Not had no hand and stone today. Me a massage, and, and he was focusing so much on my ass, and it did feel good. And I know it's a massage. And then afterwards, he asked me for my Instagram, and I was like, first of all. You don't want a lawsuit. I am a sue type of bitch. And I was like, we can't do this. You can't be doing that. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, he held my hand. He continued to work his way down my body while gently brushing his dick up against my arm and hand. Now, your arm <laughs> and your hand. I'm telling. <laughs> okay. And she said it was a real nice spa too. Yeah. They got... um. You should sue them. You, the you could get a nice little check. Mm -hmm. Okay. He asked me to turn over face up. Once I turned over, he began to run his hands down my chest and stomach with his body so close to mine, I could feel his body heat. At this point, I'm panting because his closeness and touch is absolutely turning me on. He walks down to the end of the massage table and slides my right leg from under the sheet. He starts to massage my thigh and inches closer towards my inner thigh. He keeps rubbing my inner thigh and starts to gently brush over my pussy lips. Oh! As soon as he touches me there, I come because of all the buildup. God damn, bitch! <laughs> How long has it been since you've been did you have hot love? Because if you have that hot love, the touches are going to be a little titillating. Okay. So anyway, he pushes the sheet back and starts to rub my clit gently with one hand. Was this in America? <laughs> Beautiful so, Highway. Email us back and tell us the location, bitch. <laughs> okay. Rub my clit gently with one hand and grabs my titties and rubs my body with the other hand. At this point, I'm in complete ecstasy, but not making a single sound because this is absolutely a professional environment. Bitch, you're not at work. They are. And I know we shouldn't be doing this. He rubs my clit gently and with the perfect amount of pressure until I come again. And right as I come again, someone knocks on the door. This better not be your fucking boss. Okay. Someone knocks on the door. I look at the time and realize we have been in there 25 minutes over the 60 minutes I was scheduled for. He stopped and asked me if I was okay. All I could do was shake my head yes, because the reality of what just happened was starting to settle in. Once he left the room, I threw my clothes on so fast and tried to fix my hair so I didn't look as frazzled as I felt. When I opened the door to exit the room, he was standing there waiting for me in the hall, but I couldn't look his fine ass in the eye. I awkwardly said thank you without making eye contact and hauled ass to the front desk. As bad as I wanted to get out of there, I had to stop by the desk and leave that man a tip because good law. Needless to say, I felt a lot a lot less stressed when I left. Now my only question is, should I go back and book him again? Okay, that's my first cocktail. Hope you ladies enjoyed. Sent from my iPhone. I enjoyed it. I Thank enjoyed you. that. So I hey, yes, go back, girl. Why not? Could you imagine if you go back and he doesn't do it again? Oh, <laughs> she's all trying to spread her pussy lips open. Like, <laughs> He's like, man, I'm ready for this. This is a professional level. environment. Mm -hmm. Stop. I would be very upset. Like that's how you hook up. Uh -huh. Anyway, thank you for sending in that cocktail. If any of you guys have cocktails that you want to share, send them to us, cocktails at cocktailspod.com. All right, so that's it for the show, you guys, this week. I hope that you sign up for our Patreon. Check out yes. all of the new bonus content. There's so much stuff there. There's new stuff. And if you've never been a patron, then you have years of content to go back and listen to or watch. It's Patreon 
dot com slash cocktails. Also, if you have never traveled, you have the opportunity to travel with Kiki or with myself. So make sure you guys click the links in the description in both of our separate bios so that you can get your black ass on a plane. And yeah. I wanted to, I actually wanted to say a special thank you to everybody who took the survey. It was a lot more people that took it than I anticipated. So I'm really excited. By the time this comes out, you might know where we're going. It's between Curacao and Costa Rica. We're trying Ooh. to finalize all of the details now, but I'm really excited about it i think it's going to be a great time you guys will have a blast and uh yeah so check the links in the description box to see if the trip is available for sale for me yet or not and if it's not that you still have time to get on my vip list there's going to be a special offer for everybody who is on that list you just sign up answer a couple questions leave your information and also you can sign up for medina's trip she travels around the world all year long. We do so, three trips a year, you guys. So you have more than enough time to figure out if you want to. Right now, we're probably in Fiji when you listen to this. You can come to Iceland in November, which is going to be a bucket list type of trip, or Costa Rica in November. All right, you guys. And make sure you're also <clears throat> following us on Instagram. We're at Cocktails Podcast. I'm at Kiki Said So. I'm at Coffee Bean Dean. And until next week, you guys. Goodbye. I'm sorry. But the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.